Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. Today we're going to be working on a model from one of my favorite modelers, uh, Sanix, over at Malix 3D Design, and this is the She-Hulk. Okay guys, one of the things I love about having a resin printer, and this is the uh, Algo Mars. I still have just an Algo Mars. I'm hoping to get some more resin printers. Um, <laughs> but where am I gonna put them, right? But I'm hoping to get a big format one. But until then, I'm actually liking printing these things small. It isn't like I'd print a gigantic shield, but some of the larger things I would like, some of the bigger files and helmets and stuff I'd like to give a try. But I'm loving printing these little figures. There's something about, you know, the detail, um, I've always wanted to collect, you know, models, the bone statues and things like that. They are crazy expensive. Some paint and some time in one of those little resin printers. And you can create really cool things like this, which I'm totally digging doing. And I love the painting. Now, uh, let's go ahead behind the fake wall and take a look at how I did this. And this is why I love resin printing. Look how smooth this is. Minimal cleanup. And yeah, I did use that Tamiya or Tamiya uh, fine uh, fine primer. I love that stuff. It goes on like glass. Links are below. Now, I did start using the Vallejo paints, and the coverage is amazing. And it still needs a couple coats sometimes, but I'm really, really happy with how this stuff goes on. I'm learning how to use it. I'm watching a lot of videos to understand how to thin it, when not to thin it, how to thicken it, and I'm really happy with the paint. And these are just some cheap brushes I got. Again, I'll have the links below. So I blocked in the green, and now it's just a question of the fun part, adding highlights. So what you want to do is you want to see the higher up areas on the body where light would hit it first are going to be lighter. And you can almost see from the light that I have above where the highlight should go. It's really helpful to have a light source so you can see where the light is striking it. So I've just mixed in some lighter green into that dark base. I like to start with my darker shades and then build up the highlights. And that's all I'm doing here where the muscles are protruding, where the light would be hitting it closer. I'm adding that lighter green. And you can almost see it's mimicking what the above light is showing us and it especially pops on those knees because they're the, the highest point and some of it's the light coming off the off the light source but a lot of it is really just the paint and you know you just got to experiment with it and now i've dried the brush off a little bit and i'm doing some blending so after i put the highlights in if i notice they might be too harsh i will just keep sort of working my brush or i'll put it on a paper towel get it so the brush is drier so I can just sort of push those highlights around so they blend in more with the darker shade because you don't want it to look just like it's it's separate from it you want to look like it's great it's a gradient it's grading in and you can see here I'm am putting in some lighter tones this is a thicker area or a wider area but I'm also drying the brush down a little bit and not continually putting paint on to get that highlight going and it does help to sometimes look at reference. Uh, I've got some references off frame of bodybuilders uh, lit well to really see how the sort of light hits them. You know, sculptors will use references. Uh, when I would color comics, uh, I would use references to see where the light was falling. And in this way, I would know how it sort of rounded the shape or took over the shape. And now I'm actually going a little bit further with the highlights. So these aren't as wide you're obviously going in a little bit more if you just went over the initial highlight it would sort of look a little bit too odd you want to get some blending in there and you can just see how those muscles really start popping against that dark shade because i've gone with a lighter green now to really really boost it up and i like to add a lot of contrast uh the contrast really will help show off the muscles in a figure like this uh, a lot better you know here's the, the the sort of forearm here the the bone in that arm how it's up and that's way too harsh so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say oh that's too harsh let me get some of the paint off of there and still too much <laughs> and sort of just brush it in there a little bit more now a few times i've had to go back with some of my shade color my darker color to uh to fix some things and that's going to happen 
uh, you just let it dry a little bit and you go from there and here's again just the last bits of the sort of super highlights on uh, just the really highlight areas of the model now I did this model before I picked up washes and I washes uh, I'm gonna start using in some other projects that help sort of um, sort of give some more depth to the model I've been watching a lot of sideshow models if you sideshow channel if you're into this look up slideshow or sideshows they do the the models and the those amazing figures uh, that you can pick up but they've got some painting uh, tutorials that are incredible and here we go just adding some uh, highlights to the purple again where the light would hit uh, and then leaving the other areas into shadow the darker purple and uh, now base time and base is pretty simple I always like to keep the bases simple let the figure stand out there's Sanix and I'm just gonna go with a straight black and then what I did was I got a darker gray black I put it on a paper towel and I'm just patting it and it's sort of making it look like stone make giving it a little bit of a concrete look and now I just used a little bit of silver rub and buff on a paper towel and I'm just sort of gliding it across the these top sort of hexagon pieces to give it that sort of uh, and there we go time to put it together now unfortunately this isn't a sort of front on view like some of my newer videos I recorded this quite a ways back and I'm just getting to uh, editing it up and putting it out there so I went ahead and glued the feet on first so I would know how to position the body and uh, so that the keys would all fit together and went to put the arm on now this does have this neat little rocket so I needed to put that where it is because her hand is touching the rocket and sometimes uh, resin once it touches the super glue it just stays and that's what that arm did if you notice it I didn't even you know do anything it just locked right in but there it is I'm loving this model I'm loving the string uh, Malik says he didn't give you uh, a file with that it's just string and it looks so much better uh, I love the grenades hanging off the logo looks really awesome how he designed it uh, the base is simple this will all print on a resin printer it doesn't have this gigantic base you can see the definition in the legs from the painting super super happy with how this she-hulk model turned out and again you can see by adding the highlights in those areas where the light would hit it it really makes the figure pop now I'm working to get better with faces uh, I'm pretty good with them uh, where I seem to fall down like where most people do are the eyes but I've been watching a lot of videos and hopefully I'm gonna be get better at it and better at it as I go along okay so there you go there you see it not a lot of finishing time I mean very light with the sanding a little wet sand and it's mostly painting and I'm loving these uh, Vallejo paints that I got the links are below you know I'm finding I've been watching a ton of videos on paints and painting styles and, and how to do some of this stuff and it seems like a lot of people are using Vallejo or a couple of the other brands and I went ahead and spent a little money it's not that much for the Vallejo paints uh, compared to your generic stuff but the coverage it, it has such better coverage and goes on so much smoother that it's it takes less time and it's less frustrating so take a look at those if you're thinking of doing more figures I would look at upgrading maybe your paints and, and getting some of those fine brushes. But this is another amazing file from Malix uh, or Sanix over uh, on uh, Malix 3D Design. Click on the link below, check out his page. Very, very affordable files. Uh, great guy. Uh, you, you pay for it, you download it, and you print it. It's awesome. Uh, I've probably got about four more files or four more figures of his that are in little pieces of Tupperware that I haven't got to yet, but I am working on. But uh, yeah, super happy with the She-Hulk. I love the sort of the the uh, extra 3D effect here by just using a string. Just a really fun file. Check out his site, Malix 3D Design. Great stuff, great stuff. If you like the video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe. Hit the little bell, this way you know when I have more coming up. And uh, yeah, happy printing and have a great time. Take it easy, guys.